Hey YouTube, Maple Anglican here. This is a video I thought I would do for two reasons. Uh, the first is to give non-Anglicans, particularly Protestants, a tour of an Anglican church, while secondly doing some shameless advertising for my own parish. So my home parish is All Saints Cathedral. It's located in the downtown core of Edmonton, and on the exterior, I'll admit it's not the most impressive structure, but hey, I call it home. I'll take you inside the narthex, to just in front of the main doors where you can find the cornerstone and some other items such as a portrait of our current monarch Queen Elizabeth II of Canada. Uh, the present structure was completed in 1956 and it's the third building that the parish has had on this particular site. What you're now seeing is the inside of the church from the west end in an area called the nave, which is where the pews are and where the congregation sits for services. At the end of the nave is a series of steps that go to the chancel where the ministers and choir are seated for services and will bring you to the sanctuary, which is at the very east end of the church. Now you'll notice the sanctuary is separated from the rest of the church by a rail called a communion rail. Uh, which is where most of the congregation will actually kneel to receive Holy Communion. Uh, there is a small gate built into the railing that can be opened for easy access to the sanctuary. On either side of the sanctuary are what are called archdeacon stalls, uh, and they actually have corresponding prayer desks. They're reserved for the archdeacons of the diocese when they're attending services here. Uh, the main attraction, though, in the sanctuary is the high altar, which is where the celebrant priest will celebrate the Eucharist. Here you can see that the altar and its fabrics are actually set up with red for Holy Week. And here you can see the altar set with white for Easter. And I must actually note some glorious uh, floor arrangements done by our altar guild. To the side of the altar is a special table called a credence table, which will have water, sacramental wine, and a number of other items related to the Eucharistic service itself. Also in the sanctuary is a cupboard of sorts called an ombre, which is where reserved sacrament, that is bread and wine already consecrated by a priest, is kept throughout the week for those who aren't able to attend a Sunday service. Outside the sanctuary, as mentioned earlier, is the chancel where the choir is seated in their particular pews. Also stored out here are four processional crosses. Now we generally only use two for a Sunday service. This is our first cross and this is our second cross. However, we do have one that's designated for services with our bishop, hence the nickname the Bishop's Cross. We have a fourth processional cross that is a little bit odd looking to outsiders as it's been fashioned from nails, particularly large nails. The nails in question for this cross come from the ruined cathedral at Coventry, which was destroyed during the Blitz of World War II. Several nails from the destroyed cathedral were fashioned into crosses, and All Saints was a recipient of one of these crosses. You will also see our pipe organ, which consists of 3,000 pipes, ranging in the size of a pencil to, I believe the longest one is 16 feet long. Along the side of the chancel, you'll see a number of brass placards, which mark our cannon stalls, which is where the canons of the diocese are seated for services. The chancel also has the prayer desks of the cathedral dean, who also serves as the rector of the parish, and a separate prayer desk for a second priest that we usually have titled as an associate or a curate. The chancel also contains the cathedra, or bishop's throne. It is this very chair that gives the church its title of cathedral, as we are the mother church of our diocese, and from here our bishop presides over the diocese. Down the chancel steps and off to the side, you'll find the pulpit, which is where sermons are actually delivered from. Some of our services will not use the high altar, but will use a nave altar that can be placed in front of the chancel steps, but can be moved to the side. Also located nearby is a large brass lectern shaped like an eagle. Going down back the aisle, you'll notice there are two pews on opposite sides with long wooden sticks called warden's wands, which mark where two parish officials called wardens will sit for services. They're actually reserved pews. I don't recommend sitting in them if you're not a warden. In some older parishes, 
The wand for the people's warden is top with a brass crown, and the wand for the rector's warden will be top with a brass miter. Here you can see the baptistry, which is where our baptismal font stands. The font stone itself was imported from Suffolk, England. Along the north wall of the cathedral are a series of stained glass windows depicting a number of events, such as the Annunciation to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary to Elizabeth, the presentation of the Lord, the Epiphany, the Nativity of the Lord, Christ's work and ministry, his entry into Jerusalem, his passion and crucifixion, his resurrection, and his ascension. At the back of the nave is a war memorial, and it is dedicated to members of the parish who were killed during the First World War. Of note is the misspelled name of Edmund de Wind, who was an Irish recipient of the Victoria Cross, who was a member of the parish before the war. A number of other memorials also line the walls around here. One set of items you'll find here in All Saints are our apocalypse banners, which were created for a musical drama that toured Canada during the early 1980s, and they are found a permanent home here in All Saints. Through the baptistry doors is the cathedral hall, where members of the parish will socialize after church services. Hanging above the hall in the rafters are a series of banners depicting a number of fond saints, such as St. Peter, St. Cecilia, St. Andrew. I could literally go on. And the reason we have the banners of multiple saints is because this is the parish of all saints. I put a link to the cathedral website down below if you're all interested. Uh, you're more than welcome to visit us on Sunday, any Sunday. And yeah, 